Welcome to Global Village and thank you for joining us today. This is Ahmed Kassim, your host. We, have, uh, we are honored to have our great mayor of Medicine Hat, uh, Mr. Norm Bouchot, and our three-term mayor of Brooks, uh, Mr. Don Weisberg. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, since last time you were here, I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think you were the, uh, uh, one of the first guests that opened the program, I think, back in January. Uh, we are in July now, but it's the first time after the uh, uh, provincial election of uh, 2012. Uh, how do you see that uh, provincial election, um, especially when you have all Southeast area won by the uh, Wild Rose? Well, you know, you, you have to respect the votes. When people uh, vote one way or the other for whatever reason, uh, you have to respect that. And it's at every level. It doesn't matter uh, if it's provincial, federal, or municipal. Sometimes I think the, uh, the people that vote, uh, it's little things that bothers them or they want to change. And, and, and I think that probably was uh, one of the reasons why in our area uh, there was issues that were repeated and so on. Uh, for example, land rights and things like that. So I think uh, for a lot of the farmers and ranchers, that was very important. And for a lot of other people, then this, th th there were some issues I think that, uh, that surfaced during the campaign and, and people voted. Uh, you know, uh, for the Wild Rose, at least for the two candidates we have here, Medicine Hat and Cypress Medicine Hat. So they're new at it, going to be a challenge for them. Uh, I think they welcome a challenge uh, for the government and for Alberta. Uh, you know, we have a different opposition than we've had before, different party that's there, a lot of learning, a lot of uh, experience that has to take place. Um, for us, it, it could be a good thing or it could be uh, a bad thing. It could be that we are going to get ignored, or it could be a good thing if the government says, well, now we want these, these writings back. So it could be one way or the other. So, and I've met the both, uh, both candidates uh, several times already, and uh, uh, you've got to give them a chance. You know, these people are elected. There's a, there's a reason for it. And uh, although learning curve is high, uh, there's a lot of things about uh, politics that you have to understand to really be effective. And so we'll give him a chance, and communication has to be open. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Donna, I think, uh, why do you think then uh, Madame uh, Danielle was not able to win? Well, it's interesting. I just commented, Norm's comment, I've heard from three different, he was the most sort of the neutral of one. I had one local mayor um, close to here that indicated that now we're going to be isolated and we'll get picked on, I think, uh, through a Twitter thing and or not get the benefits. Then uh, the mayor of Calgary came on, I think, the same evening and said, well, now they're going to favor these Wild Rose ridings because they'll want to get their ridings back. And Norm took the, <laughs> the more <laughs> neutral stance mm -hmm. and said, uh, it depends. And, and I had answered the time that, uh, you know, most programs are provincial in nature and uh, and uh, will get delivered at the provincial. And a lot of times it's the local mayor or the local <coughs> council that does the lobbying to get a program done rather than the local MLA, but to answer your question about the Wild Rose not getting in, I mean, Norm hit it right on, things like Bill 36 land use rights were something that was in people's mind, particularly rural people, and I think in general across the province uh, there was more antagonism towards the provincial government at the rural level than there was at the uh, urban level, particularly in Edmonton and Calgary, because those land use rights and that don't resonate as much with, uh, you know, somebody living in the city of Edmonton. <clears throat> so that was part of it. I think at the end, I mean, it was a new party. Um, with a new party, there's always some bit of skepticism or concern because they don't, you're unknown. I think that was part of it. Uh, it seemed to shift right at the end, in my view at least, uh, with some of the uh, campaigning that was done. I think the PCs did a far better job of campaigning or at least uh, showing us, us, if you like, the Wild Rose in the bad light, and we seemed to go into a bit of a cocoon at the end. So there were some strategic issues there as well. But don't forget, uh, even though the Wild Rose lost and only got 17 seats out of 87, they finished uh, second, I think, in about 50-odd seats. So, I mean, 3 or 4% can mean the difference between being <laughs> in opposition benches or winning the election. And uh, as Norm said, uh, whether it's Strathmore Brooks or Medicine Hat or the city of Calgary, the, the electorate has chosen. And we, if we live in, a, if we really believe in democracy, uh, someone said that the only time your your belief in democracy is tested is when you lose. 
I mean, it's easy to accept when you win. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you have to accept the people, whether it's here or elsewhere. One of the uh, issues that most of the new Canadians uh, and most of immigrants uh, from past uh, have very much associated with the liberal politics mm -hmm. in the federal uh, mm -hmm. level. Uh, mm -hmm. But coming now to the province of Alberta, uh, there was a press release by the uh, Wild Rose, I believe, some time back that uh, talks about uh, Alberta Human uh, Rights uh, Commission will be dismantled if uh, the Wild Rose get in as a government. So that makes also a lot of uh, New Canadians a little bit uh, unsettled yeah, with the policy. Mm -hmm. That's possible. That's possible. I, as I believe in it's not an issue that I am an expert on. I believe that she wanted to get rid of the commission, not the act itself. Felt that the courts were more than capable of a looking where the commission became a in her view became an entity uh, and a power base unto itself that she was uncomfortable with. But uh, to, to your point, yes, I can imagine some people in the immigrant community being a little but concerned over that. I mean, that's but, but you see, I see it differently uh, because uh, all of Canada, it doesn't matter where you're at, because we have people moving from one province to the other. Yeah. Canada has been recognized for being very, very strong on human rights. Mm -hmm. So I think it has to be present everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, not through courts, because uh, f for one thing, new Canadians uh, don't like court system. They don't quite understand how it works. They don't know how to defend themselves. And uh, a lot of times they can't afford lawyers and whatever else. It makes it difficult. So I think having a commission there is, is, is a really a good level, because you can challenge the commission through courts. So anyway, that's only one view, but, but I, I, I think that uh, we were voted for many years as the best country in the world for, for that, for, for things like this. Peaceful, friendly, acceptance. Uh, and, and you know, you got to remember one thing. We're going to have thousands of jobs coming up in this province. And, and we have a lot of people retiring. They're at the end of being a welder or, or being a heavy duty mechanic and so on. Who's going to replace them? Because the people we have in, in, in this province, uh, a lot of them don't have uh, you know, enough babies to replace their numbers, mm -hmm. for example. So we're going to need help from other countries. So as you have them, uh, a lot of people, and I worked in two UN missions, I can tell you, they saw Canada as a very focused uh, country on human rights. And that means every province. Yeah. So having said that, uh, I mean, everybody can have their different opinions, and that's the nice thing about different parties. It would be boring if we all think <laughs> the, same the same way. But there's different roads that lead to Rome, and the yeah. same thing. You can get there by going different ways, but you still have to respect uh, Albertans in Alberta or, or Canadians in Canada or, or Medicine Hat Hatters yeah. in, in Medicine Hat. So that's, that's the premise that you must observe as... as um, as a party or as a, a government. Mm -hmm. Do you think then, uh, uh, going back to the liberal government when they were in power, uh, federal government I'm talking about, that uh, the, uh, the assistance provided by Canada to the overseas, uh, uh, those uh, unfortunate countries which has uh, problems either with refugees, either uh, problems in, in the country, corrupted society back in Africa, Latins, Latin America, or Asian. So do you think uh, then uh, the last few years with the conservative government, uh, we increase or decrease that role of Canada? Well, it depends which program that is. Uh, there are international programs under the United Nations that are very different. You have CEDA, which is actually one that uh, helps uh, economic development and whatever yeah. else in other countries. Uh, the number of, uh, of dollars put in, yeah, has decreased to a certain level. I know because I'm on the board of directors for Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and uh, so, so the, the amount of money. But, but you got to remember one thing. Some of that money sometimes is not used properly. You mm -hmm. try to help another country, it doesn't always get to the source where it needs help. And that's where it's important to, when you put money, to put conditions with it. So over the years, we've learned a lot about this, and it depends where it is. We also know that a lot of countries, as far as governments, are corrupt. Yeah. So you have to make those conditions, uh, you know. So sometimes it's good to say, okay, let's put the brakes on. Let's revisit where's the money going to. Are we really helping what we want to do as a country to help other countries and, and other population? Refugees is a little bit different. Refugees are stuck with nothing. 
A lot of them are li living in tents and stuff like that. So again, the UN has a part in there under the UNHCR, uh, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugee. Uh, and then there's other all kinds of other agencies. And, and what's important is, is to be able to work with the other agencies. And there's all kinds of things, Médecins Sans Frontières, Red Cross, you name them. So <laughs> as a country, we've always done well when it comes to this. And it's part of those where we get respect back by trying to help them out. Yeah. Make a comment. Uh, I think in terms, and I don't know, I'd have to defer to you, Om, in terms of the immigration community's view of the past Liberal government versus the current Conservative government. In terms of the number of immigrants and refugees coming into country, there's, uh, you know, they're higher now than they were four years ago. I think the Conservative government has got a lot, a lot of publicity for obvious reasons because of their recent clamp ground on so-called illegal um, in, in refugees, both people that are coming out illegally, but in terms of, you know, welcoming refugees from, you know, United Nations camps, a legitimate movement of refugees, I think, uh, this government is carrying on the tradition. I hate to use that word because I don't like to give the Liberals any credit, but uh, <laughs> that's my own bias. But <laughs> they've carried on that tradition as being a very welcoming country in terms of the percentage, as Norm said, the percentage of immigrants coming into our country as a percent of our population. I um, mean, we're one of the leaders in the world in terms of in terms of numbers. You know, I think we bring in close to 300,000 uh, refugee or immigrants a year. For, you know, for a population of what 33 million people. So you're but saying you may say you may you you know, there may be that kind of image. I don't know. So you're saying that the the, n the number increased under uh, mm -hmm. has increased slightly since zero uh, six, but it was increasing under liberals as well. I mean, it wasn't a static figure. Kay. I'm just just wanted to get that over just because their the conservatives are cranking. D we can, that's another subject. Cranking down on illegal immigrants doesn't mean that they're not carrying on the UN tradition of legitimate immigrants. But. Yeah. What you have to make the difference, though, is that you have immigrants that come in for work permits, mm -hmm. for selling families, family uh, reunifications, very different than refugees. Mm -hmm. We have a, a small part. Yeah. We have we have a commitment under international refugee to accept some people, and those are people that uh, sometimes they don't have any trade. Where do you where do you put them? What kind of job can they get? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're very different situations. Mm -hmm. As far as refugee. Uh, it's very hard to retrace their history. They could have been involved in the war in their own country or whatever it is. They're now in a camp and whatever. So you, you cannot find that information in most. But as far as immigrants, you can in, in a lot of cases. In dealing with the embassies that serve <coughs> this country, you can try to figure out, okay, we, we know in some of them you can refuse certain immigrants, mm -hmm. but as far as refugees, very difficult to do. And by the way, uh, many years ago, w we received a lot of people, uh, as we called them boat people, but from Vietnam and some, yeah. some of the mm -hmm. other countries. Mm -hmm. They showed up on our shore. Mm -hmm. Our idea is, is, is probably to, to try to help them out, sort them out, who are they, and if you find out they're criminals, hey. Uh, Send them back. Then obviously. Which isn't always easy. <laughs> it's very difficult, yeah. because you cannot always <laughs> retrace their background. Yeah. So, But uh, I think we're still a caring country. I think we have to be, uh, this is one of the, uh, the good things we are recognized for, so I think that's the, the positive thing and about the thing, Canada. And the thing with refugees too, they get a lot of media attention, but they're a very smart, small part of our overall immigration mm -hmm. amount, and they always have been. Eh? Uh, you know, part that we're compassionate about, as Norm said. I'm, the other thing is under the Conservatives, and Monty Solberg, the previous MP, was very part of the Temporary Foreign Workers Program, which, you know, to bring workers into places like Fort McMurray and other places was enhanced under the Conservatives. They really push for that, which has been somewhat successful, and there's been issues there as well, but... Uh, uh. The, the only thing I see is right now there's a lot of change happening in immigration, and I don't know if it's to the better or not, particularly for our province, which is a half province, and, and like I said, we'll have so many more jobs. This is not a time to put the brakes on, so this is where you're going to see a difference of opinion between the province and the federal government. I mean, I if people want to come to go to the Maritimes, Ontario, Quebec, whatever it is, they will have a hard time maybe getting jobs. But yeah. here, there is a better chance. And you know what immigrants want is, yeah. is a chance to, uh, to get a job, because that's the basis, to think, yeah. so that they can establish their families and so on. And the hard part in an immigrant, and I've dealt with a lot of them when I was with the RCMP for 30 years, um, is the first generation. The first generation, a lot of time, have problems with language, they have really a lot of problems with culture and so on, but the second generation, in other words, their kids will, yeah. uh, will get in to how do they fit in and so on. It's much easier for them, but the first generation certainly have a hard time. So if they don't have a job 
And that's where a lot of Canadians may, may criticize the system to say, well, you know, they're on our dime. In other words, we're paying to keep them whatever it is. But that's very tough on the first generation. By the second generation, and that could be within 20 years, sometimes less than that, um, then you have people who are actually quite productive. And you've got to remember one thing. Canada was built with immigrants. Yeah. It was, it, you know, all the big infrastructure, some of it with money that came from other countries yeah. and so on. So there is, a, there is a reason why we need we need immigrants, and we got lots of room. So, uh, but coming to the mayor, uh, you, uh, you mentioned Alberti's Alberti's economical cycle is booming. Uh, do you think that the government considers then maybe the east, whether uh, the maritime have uh, they don't have job, they have uh, more unemployed people, so they encouraging those people to come here rather than bringing people from outside? Would that be a reason for? But but you, I've lived in the maritimes. Uh, I don't know if you have, but. No. But I can tell you the attitude of people there is very different. Yeah, they okay. don't want to be away from their families. Very difficult. And we have lots of people here, for example, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, some New Brunswick, um, that have come here for work. Yeah. And uh, I, I've talked to some of them. They've left their family there, some of them. Mm -hmm. So they come here and do their work and they go back, you know, uh, after so many weeks of yeah. work. You can see the tie in their family. Not everybody is so mobile that you can say, okay, let's get in the van and we're moving to Alberta. I so see. that makes it difficult. When, uh, very different than, than you have an immigrant, because usually the immigrants will come in, uh, set, settle, can I find a job? Once they have that, I want my family with me. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're leaving a place where really some of them don't have very much hope for a future and so yeah. on. Yeah. And that's very different than, than moving people within Canada. Within Canada. The only comment I would make is you have to separate, really be careful, you separate refugees from the normal course of immigrants, and as I said earlier, the immigrants are the, by far the largest uh, portion of it. Refugees are here for a reason, and they're here for compassionate reasons, and we have to play that role within, uh, you know, within the world community as one of the wealthier communities and, and provide a place for refugees regardless of their economic status, etc. Immigrants are different. Immigrants are expected just by their very nature to contribute to society, and obviously in Alberta we need immigrants. We talked about that earlier and uh, we have to do it, but they have to come with some credentials. We're not going to take people on the immigrant part unless we consider them, um, and we, I don't think we have a policy of waiting for the second generation norm, but uh, and anyway, we have to have a policy where these guys are contributing to society right away, putting aside family reuni reunification and stuff like that, which is obviously you know, important as well. So you're saying second generation will take time? Well, it always will. We can see that in, even in our community of Brooks. Yeah. But yeah. I, I just yeah. want to add one thing because um, what is, what is um, I know when I, w when I was working in uh, Kosovo, for example, a lot of immigrants are well educated, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then some Canadians don't have that same education. And then sometimes we don't recognize their education. And yeah. that's why we, we've talked about, you know, people who have, uh, we have in our own community, somebody who's a doctor but cannot practice here. Yeah and so on, or you can be uh, an engineer but they don't recognize your, your level of education mm -hmm. and so on. So I think there has to be a top-up uh, approach to things. Okay, if you, if you were a practicing professional in your country, let's see what, what you need to really top it up so that you can be useful I in building uh, you know, the province and the area <coughs> in Canada. I think that's one of the worst mistakes we made. Of, there's, I don't know if you probably know the immigration system better than I, where you get the points for education, where you, yeah. on the immigration form, yeah. you get great points, like doctor, as Norm uh, uses as the example, yeah. would come over here and not be able to practice um, for legitimate or non-legitimate reason. I think that was a disaster of a program. Actually, I had, when I was with McDonald's and Brooks, I had a doctor working for me that ended up, uh, from Russia, they ended up committing suicide because he couldn't do the job that he loved. Um, and I think that's been a disastrous part of our immigration policy over several years. I mean, you've got to do the work at home to ensure that yeah. <laughs> these people, and I think Norm but, and I are but, agreeing on that. But, but having said that, uh, Don, what it is, is I know Canadians will say we invest a lot yeah. into people that are unproven to us. But really, in business, that's what happens too. When you hire somebody, you're not too sure if that person's going to fit in to what you require them to do. That's why usually a lot of times you have a probationary period. So that's that, what I'm trying to say is that we do have to invest. We've already, we can accept some if they're very close to the, the needs we have. And that could be welders as much as it could be uh, professionals of, of high caliber. Uh, but 
we're probably better off to see if we can invest a little bit to make sure that they can reach the level. Because there's no mm -hmm. sense in having somebody who was a professional in their country and then driving cabs here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're missing the opportunity. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all I was trying to say as yeah. well. It's, it's a desire. Remember, you say to invest. Well, we have to invest in our own kids, take them through university and everything else. I mean, thank goodness uh, we're allowing South African doctors to come in. I mean, we didn't have South African doctors in Brooks. Uh, and most of us wouldn't have a doctor. Yeah, Here's an interesting thing. In Alberta, uh, it's probably uh, the greatest number and percentage of people that don't finish high school because they have great jobs right away. Hey, it pays really a lot of money, so they go out into the workforce. Don't finish their high school. Don't get into uh, advanced education and stuff like that because they've had jobs. So, but you can't hold... You can't hold, based on that, uh, you know, stop immigrants from coming in. They maybe have higher uh, qualification and maybe need to be topped up. You know what I mean? You've got to have a competitive feel when it comes to employing everybody to make sure we all, a as a province, uh, grow. Yeah, that is uh, very true indeed, uh, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, Canada being um, one of the signatories in Geneva Convention back in 1959, I believe, when it comes to refugees, mm -hmm. uh, but other immigrants, uh, whether uh, foreign recruit or others, are totally different when it comes to the uh, the uh, convention refugee as of uh, mm -hmm. Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, um, the uh, the need of the nation as many immigrants to come for many years to come, I think will dictate how strong our economics are. Oh, absolutely. You go. I mean, I've got a brother who lives in Fort McMurray. I go visit them quite a bit. Ten years ago, you would walk down the street of Fort McMurray and you'd seldom see a visible minority. Uh, sometimes now when I walk down the street there, I, I have to shake my head and think I'm back in Brooks in terms of <laughs> you know, the immigrants that have come in. And that's all through the, mainly through the Temporary Foreign Workers Program. But, yeah. but why, why do you think we're having difficult to retain immigrants in general in Brooks County of New York uh, since you've also been a businessman in, in the area? In terms of? Retaining the uh, the immigrants in the area, uh, they come and go. They come oh. and go. Uh, you know that's uh, an interesting. Uh, they certainly do come and go. The turnover, uh, you know, at the, at the you know at Lakeside, which you would be more familiar with Alma than I am, is huge. And uh, you probably can answer that better than I do. I mean, there's always a tendency to uh, to move to the bigger cities. I mean, uh, both my kids uh, live in a bigger city now, even though they grew up in Brooks. I mean, that's probably part of the natural part of it. And uh, maybe it's other opportunities too. I mean, I see them in Lakeside a lot. I do see them in the service industry a lot in Brooks. I don't see them in the oil patch some of uh, them much as well as much. Yeah, some, so of, some of them complain about there is no, no place to go in, in Brooks or County of New York when it comes to uh, services taking the family in, when they when you don't have a work where to go that is the question they mm -hmm. come to medicine hat for entertaining their family okay and in terms of other programs yeah other programs yeah, yeah, entertain yeah. themselves there is no mall they say there is no uh, mm -hmm. yeah and they but you know that my kids would say the same thing yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, sure. they'd rather live in edmonton than live in brooks because there's more amenities but, eh? but you yeah. think of the whole picture of, uh, of canada for one thing the the, the great a place where people go is Toronto, as far as immigrants. Yeah. You know why? Because they have support groups there. And, and what happens with immigrants, uh, if, if they come from a certain country, they'll try to find people who come from the same country mm -hmm. and then get used to what Canada is all about. How do you get a driver's license? How do you get into your health care? How do you get all that stuff that we know and, and we practice? Once they get their feet wet and they understand what Canada is all about, understand the politics behind it, maybe have chance for better jobs or whatever else, then they're ready to move. So I would think that Brooks is probably the same thing. But if you're going to send your kids to university, there's no university in Brooks unless you're going to take courses by correspondence or whatever. Mm. And that's not given. That's not easy for, for a lot of people. So uh, people want a little more, uh, you know, uh, advantages or... Uh, amenities if you want for their families and you know as you grow that's one thing I mean Brooks is not far from Calgary either if it's yeah. just shopping you can make a trip go do your shopping in the large city like Calgary but, but a lot of times uh, the, the seniors that arrive like I said the first generation will want their kids to experience all kinds of things and it's available and sometimes the kids want it like mm -hmm. yours and, and mine too because they mm -hmm. went to university in, in big cities and they stay there yeah but sometimes they do, eh? especially mm -hmm. if they meet somebody and first thing you know is, uh, well, I'm now living in Edmonton or, mm -hmm. or wherever else. That's what happens. But uh, and, and you can't hold people with handcuffs. 
And you know, uh, but, but Brooks has been great. It's a godsend actually for a lot of immigrants to come into the country, get a job first. Immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times there's, there's, there's some support and some connections of your country, where you, wherever you come from. So it's a good start. Uh, but then after that, look, it's, it's, a free, it's a free country. So they can decide, no, I, I would rather go to Vancouver or maybe Regina, who knows. But and I don't think that's an immigrant issue. You look no. at the obstetrics, that, I mean, the issue we have with uh, physicians in Brooks. We've been struggling for a decade or more to get physicians in Brooks, and uh, um, we had to shut down our uh, baby delivery obstetrics for a couple of years because we just couldn't find a doctor too. So you have that same issue in a smaller community. Um, and then you also have it with the age of two, as people get older, they would rather move, or often would rather move to a place closer to a hospital or closer to specialist services, which, you know, obviously Brooks uh, can't provide on a regular service. So some of this is natural, frustrating, but natural. I think <laughs> one, of, one of the other things that probably they have is the fact that uh, there, there is no much um, add on where to go. Uh, that we have a lot of facilities available, but the thing is most of them have no clue. Uh, they are a little bit ignorant of where to go. We have the new lake, we have all that dinosaur, we have mm. all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But they, they don't know because they are not in the limelight, they are not uh, being mm. told. So that plays the effect of them staying at oh, home, sure. going to work, coming back. So they say, you know what, there's no place to go. Maybe we have many places to go, but we, we don't advertise. File, I just want to thank to Mr. Mayor Norm Bouchot for the for their great gift of of the refugee uh, the dab refugee last year mm -hmm. uh, i was i believe it was uh, last year sometime and uh, that money i have reached a lot of people from uh, the dab refugee camp have uh, received food and and all that because of the money donated by the city of medicine hat and i want to take this opportunity because i was talking to a couple of the leaders in the dab refugee mm -hmm. and i wanted to thank them personally to you to the community of Medicine Hub for their generosities. Well, it's actually the citizens, and we knew that the Horn of Africa needed help. So, uh, personally, uh, we voted on that. This is how it works in the democratic process, and uh, I'm glad it, it, it was useful. That's why we thank you and your council and the citizens of this beautiful city for their generosity to the uh, Horn of Africa, uh, that time refugee, that type refugee, and the people who they were very appreciative and very thankful. Thank you very much for both of you coming to the Global uh, TV show today, and we hope to have you very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed. Good luck. Thank you, sir. This is uh, the end of Global Village. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you will join us next time, and we bring the whole world to your, to your doorstep. Until then, this is Ahmed Kassim, your host of the show. <laughs>